I, 34 female, have been married to my husband for 10 years. We have two daughters together, a kindergartner and a pre-tween. I have a daughter from a high school relationship who is nearly an adult. My daughter is seven months pregnant. The father is in her life. They're both working hard and saving money. I've already had the necessary talks with my daughter, but she's dead set on being a mother to this child. My sister-in-law, 35, has struggled with fertility and basically has been told she cannot have children. They've been actively trying or just not using protection for the past 10 years and only conceived twice, ending in early losses. My mother-in-law already suggested letting my sister-in-law adopt this baby and we told her my daughter's wishes. The other day I came home from work and my mother-in-law was over. I overheard her talking to my daughter about that idea, telling her how she wouldn't be fit to be a mother and sister-in-law is much more prepared and she wouldn't want to repeat the cycle because I had her so young. She then pulled a guilt trip and told her how sister-in-law's dream is for a child. I simply opened the door and said, get out. She stared at me in complete disbelief, then said I couldn't kick her out of her son's house. I said I can, and I just did. She left, but then when my husband got home from work, he said she left a ton of messages about how in the wrong I am and how I'm setting my daughter up for failure. My husband is on my side. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. While I cannot imagine the tough journey your sister-in-law is on as she navigates her fertility struggles, your daughter's circumstance is not a patch job for your sister-in-law's situation. There are tough conversations to be had when one is pregnant without planning it, regardless of age. Still, it was not your mother-in-law's place to have any of those conversations, and she didn't even approach it as a conversation. She was trying to manipulate your daughter emotionally. She deserved to get kicked out. She has no respect for boundaries or decency. Not to mention that the child's father also has a say and it sounds like he wants to be involved. With the father actively present, they can try to bully OP's daughter, but they can't just try to force her boyfriend into giving up his child. Seriously, OP, have your husband give mother-in-law a stern lecture about not goddamn guilt-tripping his daughter and not shame the poor girl. Also, not to mention that mother-in-law was at the house when both OP and her husband were not to have the talk with OP's daughter, who is not mother-in-law's grandchild. I hope that she treated her like a grandchild all these years, but this action makes me think differently. Even if your daughter eventually decides motherhood is not for her, she is not a broodmare for your in-laws. Letting a close family member adopt the baby is a horrible idea, put forth by horribly selfish people. Good on you and your husband to have your daughter's back. Oh, good point. Opie's daughter is from her previous relationship. It seems they'd have a battle on their hands. Food for thought. Could you, or your husband, touch base with sister-in-law to see if she knew what mother-in-law was doing? I hope she was unaware, but if she was not, it may necessitate a conversation with both mother-in-law and sister-in-law about boundaries and what is and is not their place in regard to your daughter's pregnancy, although I also encourage you to check with your daughter to see if she's willing and comfortable to have you advocate on her behalf this way. I hope your mother-in-law is by herself in this insanity. Sister-in-law may be as much a victim as anyone else here, with mother-in-law acting as an unwanted agent. It all started over dinner when my wife decided to grab a soda from the fridge. My wife saw my daughter, kindergartner, eyeing the soda with interest and offered her some with a warning that it was spicy. My daughter took a sip of the soda and had a look of uncertainty. My wife then asks, did you like it? My daughter says, yes, with an uncertain look. So finish it, my wife says as my daughter refuses. My wife follows up with, ah, because you didn't like it. The daughter replies, no, I do like it, mom. I just don't want any more. So finish it. Daughter finishes the drink and says, that was yummy, mom. This goes on for another five minutes of back and forth with my wife trying to get my daughter to admit that she doesn't like the soda. I sit there enjoying the back and forth banter as it all seems playful. Suddenly, my wife tells my daughter, no toys, no games, no tablets for lying. My daughter, visibly confused and sad, says, mom, I just didn't like it because it was too bubbly. My wife says, too late, nothing for the rest of the night, get ready for bed. I sat there confused due to the playful nature suddenly becoming a lesson about lying. I mentioned that our daughter just wanted to impress her by drinking an adult drink and wasn't about deceiving her. I was then accused of just allowing my daughter to walk all over us and play us like we were idiots. My wife had made up her mind that my daughter is a pathological liar because of this and other light lying examples children do regularly, i.e. that wasn't me who knocked that over, I don't remember you saying that when I was big, etc. 
I mentioned that she set my daughter up and it wasn't taken kindly. She then began putting down my abilities as a parent and told me to wait until she was a teenager and lie about much more serious things and she was going to get away with it because I didn't question her. I felt like this was blown way out of proportion and she stormed into our office and said, I guess I'm the only parent here. Keep letting her slide, you'll see. Anyways, am I the idiot? Not the idiot, but dude, what the heck? That's a pretty extreme overreaction on her part. Besides, it sounded less like your daughter was lying and more like she was just trying to be polite. It's silly of your wife to get so upset over this. What is wrong with your wife? She had a bad day? She isn't feeling well? Is she always this angry? She's a narcissistic abuser who, for some reason, has decided her own daughter is a threat to her and is seeking to punish her for imagined slights. Setting kids up with manipulative questions like that is a surefire way for them to develop anxiety when they get older. Do you really feel this way? Am I just lying to myself? I should just stick with what I know I like. This type of parenting is going to make her a nervous wreck who can't trust her own judgment. It's also teaching her she can't trust her mother. To me, that's the absolute worst thing about this kind of parenting. It's wicked witch type parenting, which only ensures you screw up your kid and don't have a relationship with her later in life. Mom has some serious issues she should get therapy for before screwing up her kids. Who needs to outsmart a kindergartner to feel better about themselves? That poor baby. Precisely all of this. The really worrying part is that the girl sounded like she was trying to appease the mother, which suggests it's not the first time. It was a no-win situation and the daughter was aware of that. And dad just sat there like a moron enjoying the back and forth banter, not realizing his daughter was being emotionally and mentally abused. OP was likely the wife's first victim of gaslighting and abuse, and I can see that by how oblivious he is and was. Sadly, my mom was the exact same way and did the same things to me, and my dad continues to be oblivious to it. OP, I really think you and your daughter should move out and get away from this woman. I hosted Thanksgiving at my home this year. We had several lactose intolerant family members, one of them being my son's husband, so I made some recipes using oil or olive oil butter over real butter or lactate milk so it would be safe. I made sure to put the dairy-free items apart from anything with regular milk and butter by having a separate small table for those dishes. My son-in-law ended up feeling very ill and my son brought him to the ER that night. Even though I used safe ingredients, he still reacted to something unknown in the food. My son rang me up from the hospital asking what was in the dishes of the dairy-safe table. I told him I used oil, vegan butter and lactose. He was upset with me because I put milk into the mashed potatoes. I told him again that I put lactate milk so it would be safe. My son-in-law has recovered and is doing well. My son, however, is quite upset with me and claims he cannot trust me to cook food for them again because I mislabeled the food. He's claiming he's told me many times about his husband's dairy allergy and I agree he has, which is why I made separate food. It's now to the point where the family doesn't want me to make any dairy-free dishes for Christmas because I am failing to understand. Instead, they agreed that my sister-in-law would make some of those dishes while my son and son-in-law would make the rest. I'm beside myself because I love to cook for and feed my family. I feel like I'm being displaced when what happened on Thanksgiving could have been caused by a reaction to anything. Edit, yes, they went to the ER just to be safe. My son-in-law developed a rash and upset stomach and used his EpiPen as a precaution. He was just observed and given an IV at the hospital and sent home in the morning. He didn't have an anaphylactic shock reaction to the food. I think some people here are very worried about the ER visit. He's doing very well now. Of course, we've talked about his issue. My son told me no dairy and provided me a list of foods to avoid and what to replace with. But I've been making lactose alternatives for years for my lactose allergic nephews, so I was already aware of how to accommodate a milk allergy. You are the idiot. Your son-in-law is not lactose intolerant. He's allergic to dairy. Lactose intolerance is an entirely different medical condition compared to dairy allergy. People allergic to dairy cannot have lactated milk or any dairy in any form. I can see that you tried your best to make something safe for your son-in-law, but it sounds like, without knowing, you made a mistake that could have resulted in your son-in-law's death. Also, you still don't understand the reason why the food that you made wasn't safe for your son-in-law, so it's really for the best, for his safety, if you don't cook for him again. I'm sure you wouldn't want your son-in-law to become very ill or die from eating food you cooked, so I really hope you can come to terms with this and not feel like anyone is trying to displace you. 
Read some of her edits. She didn't try her best. The Sun gave her a list of dairy-free alternatives and explicitly told her to use no dairy. And then she put milk in the mashed potatoes. They told her he is allergic to dairy products, including milk. And she put milk in the food. The guy she's trying to poison is an adult, her son's husband. Should we add homophobic to the list of adjectives that describe OP? Yeah, mate, I read this story and literally Googled whether lactate milk was safe for people with dairy allergies and learnt it wasn't. Yet you think with all the effort OP put into describing how much she cares, she couldn't have Googled it? This is a just-no mother-in-law sneaking in for validation. Update, I understand my mistake now. It was an honest confusion. Of course, I have apologised and will again to my son-in-law. I'm not sure why anyone doubts that. They don't want me to pay for his EpiPen or hospital visit. All they want is for me not to prepare food for my son-in-law any longer, which I understand now. I feel horrible. I didn't look up the lactate, but I honestly thought it was safe. No, I didn't try to murder my son-in-law. I thought milk allergy was an allergic reaction to the lactose sugar in milk. Honestly, I do feel horrible. I didn't know there was a difference. I should only use vegan milk then and not lactose-safe milk in the future. My half-sister and I share a mom. She's nine years older than me, nearly adult female. Her dad died when she was five and my mom remarried to my dad when she was eight and got pregnant with me straight away. Until I was ten, I thought she was the best person ever and I wanted us to have a relationship like my friends had with their siblings. But she has rejected me as not being her real sister from day one. She also rejects my dad as anything other than my mother's bed warmer and she's called him that to his face and in front of other people. My dad always lets it slide and mom will tell her we're a family to which my half-sister will say she's family but my dad and I are not. When I was six, my brother was born but didn't make it. Mom had grandma come over to watch my half-sister and me while she was in the hospital and we were told something happened to our brother. I was really upset because I'd been so excited and wanted comfort from my half-sister. She told me to grow up and stay away from her. She also told me it was a shame the same thing didn't happen when mom was expecting me. Grandma was horrified and told her she would regret saying that, but my half-sister told her she wouldn't regret saying that about someone she didn't love. The breaking point was that Christmas when I was 10. She decided to stay with a different family member for Christmas, but did show up to our grandparents for Christmas Day celebrations. I was excited to see her and thought the fact she showed up meant she might like me now, but after I tried talking to her, she turned on me and said she didn't give a damn about me or my life and didn't want me to know anything about hers. She called me pathetic and asked why she would care about someone like me. She told me if she could turn back time, she would have begged for mum to have a termination with me because I was disgusting. It was that point where I think I hit the point where I was like, you know what? Fine. Over the last seven years, I've seen her maybe three times. She avoids being where I will be, and she's made it clear to mom that if mom wants to see her, dad and I are not welcome, and we're not invited into her life. Now she's getting married, and she invited me and wanted me there because questions were asked. Mom was so happy when my half-sister told her she really wanted me there. Mom was so eager to tell me. My half-sister even showed up to invite me personally, but I told her I wouldn't go. She explained she needed me and why, and I told her I would not make her look better by showing up. I said she wants me dead. I don't want her in my life. It's as simple as that. Mom cried that we're siblings, and I told her I lost my only sibling when my brother was born. He would have been my only sibling because my half-sister sure as heck wasn't a sibling for me. She made it clear many times over she didn't want to be. My half-sister and mom both feel I'm really in the wrong. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your half-sister has been treating you below trash since you were born. You tried to fix the relationship with your sister and nothing changed. Your mom should de-escalate issues and not allow your half-sister to treat you like she treated you. Too late. And your father? That is awful. Calling the stepfather bed warmer? What is that? People like your half-sister should be cut out of your life. She did not treat you like family and you do not owe her anything. She wants you at the wedding to avoid questions. And so what? You don't owe her anything. Never act because people might feel you're guilty. I have a feeling she's told her new in-laws about you and now she has to have you come to the wedding and play happy family in front of them. Now that your sister needs something, suddenly you have to be the bigger person. It also doesn't sound like your sister had a change of heart. She just doesn't want to seem like the bad person she is. 
If she genuinely had a change of heart and were making a proper effort, I'd try, but not like this. Oh, go and insist that you make a speech and just tell all the hilarious things the bride has said. Oh, she's always been such a joker. Like that time my mother lost her son and the beautiful bride told me she wished I'd been dead too. Oh, or that time she said she wished she'd begged our mom to end me. Always joking, that one. I was so excited to see her on Christmas one year and she told me, Oh, it was so funny. I was pathetic and asked why she would ever want anything to do with me. That's extra funny today considering she insisted I attend her wedding. I guess we found out why you want me around, sis. Always pulling pranks, she is. And then drop the happy face, stare daggers at the bride and walk out. Don't do this, but I feel like writing that speech could be therapeutic. I'm really sorry you went through that. I, a teen female, sometimes babysit on weekends. My mom's co-worker needed a babysitter and she gave him my number. I agreed to babysit three kids from 2pm till 8.30pm because the parents had some party to go to. It went okay, but the parents didn't get back at 8.30. At 9, I tried calling him, but he didn't pick up. I texted a few times. At 9.30, I tried calling again and again at 10 and 10.30. I tried calling my parents, but my dad was at a work dinner and my mom didn't pick up. I tried calling the kids' parents again, but they still weren't picking up or responding. At 11.30ish, I called the police because I didn't know what else to do, and I was worried something might have happened to the parents, too. They came, and around the same time, the parents came back. The dad screamed at me, and he's still very upset. Am I the idiot for calling the police when the parents I babysit for were late? Edit, I called the police because I was worried about the parents not picking up and being late and because I really had to get home. I didn't involve CPS or anything like that. I didn't call the emergency number and I was paid up front, so not for the extra three hours. Not the idiot. I'm sorry, the parents came home three hours later than they said they would. They gave you no heads up and they wouldn't answer their phone. What were you supposed to think? And then dad took it out on you by screaming at you. Oh, and he's still very upset. Well, you're upset too. I hope you never babysit for them again. And you should let all your babysitter friends know what these people are like. Just tell your friends the whole story. And instead of giving her the real time and paying for her to be there, they tried to scam her into extra hours without the pay. I hope OP's mom has her back. I'd be really mad if a co-worker lied to my kid about the babysitting length, ignored calls and then screamed at my kids. What an idiot. Her mom hung her out to dry too, so I doubt it. All four adults failed her, and only one, her dad, has an excuse for not answering her calls. Girl, you did the absolute right thing. You tried contacting the father several times, but he didn't respond. They came back three hours after you were told they'd be returning. The father was in the wrong and he knew it. That's why he screamed at you. A responsible parent would have picked up your calls. I'm sure I don't have to say this, but don't ever babysit for these idiots again.